Okay, so last time we talked about what radiation is, where it comes from, and how it can cause harm to our body by damaging DNA during the replication process. But the discussion was quite qualitative, and in order to get concrete, we have to start putting some numbers to it and understand what a radioactive dose actually is. Firstly, we look at how much energy a particle deposits in our body per unit mass, and we call this the absorbed dose. And this is measured in units of joules per kilogram, which is also known as the gray. But different types of radiation can cause different levels of harm. So a big bulky alpha particle, for example, can hit around in your DNA, smashing up loads of things, causing a huge amount of havoc, sending potentially hundreds of particles flying off in this way and that, whilst a gamma ray might go straight through your DNA and cause no harm whatsoever. So we have to take this into account. And we do this by multiplying by something called the quality factor. I mean, personally it should be called, say, the danger factor or something, but we're stuck with the name. So for a gamma ray, the quality factor is 1. For a beta particle, or a proton, it's 10. And finally, for a hugely dangerous alpha particle, the quality factor can be as large as 20. And by multiplying these two together, we get what is called the equivalent or effective dose. And this is measured in a unit called the sievert, denoted by SV. OK, so that's how we measure how much energy has been deposited in our body and how much harm it's going to do. But how large is the sievert? I mean, is that a large dose? Is it a small dose? And to make this concrete, a dose of one sievert is enough to increase your risk of developing fatal cancer over your life by 5.5%. So a SIVA is the usual benchmark that the space agencies place for limiting their astronaut radiation exposure. And that's our goal. We want to make it so that our astronauts living on the surface of Mars do not exceed an equivalent dose of one sievert. So now the question is, how much radiation will the astronauts be exposed to on their way to Mars? And we actually know this now, because the Curiosity rover carried a radiation instrument that measured the dose it was exposed to on the way to Mars. And the value that it came to was 386 plus or minus 63 millisieverts. Or in other words, almost 40% of that one sievert career allowance for astronauts that we mentioned. So this is obviously a big problem. And how are we going to deal with it? So you might ask, well, that's a lot of radiation out there in space. How are we protected on Earth? And as we mentioned last time, radiation mainly consists of positively or negatively charged particles. And when you send a charged particle into a magnetic field, this happens. It gets deflected. Its path gets bent. And so this is what protects us here on Earth by a giant global magnetic field. So you might say, well, why don't we build our own magnetic field? Why don't we have a magnetic field generator on the ship? And that could work. The problem is it's never been tested before. And even the most conservative estimates place the power requirements of such a machine at 10 kilowatts, which just isn't really feasible at present. Mars One instead has a simpler approach, but nevertheless an effective approach which is to take the full seven month supply of 3,000 litres of water along with the transit vehicle from the start attached as external tanks. And this is brilliant because it kills two birds with one stone by offering radiation shielding and meaning that we don't have to have the risk of water recycling machines breaking down on the way to Mars. So it's an excellent idea. And in total, it would provide between 10 and 15 grams per square metre of radiation shielding which isn't much, it compares to 1,000 grams per square metre that we have here on Earth from the atmosphere, but it's certainly better than nothing. And in the case of a solar flare 
or coronal mass ejection being detected, the astronauts will be alerted and they will then evacuate into a hollowed out water tank where they will stay for a few days with an increased shielding of 40 grams per square meter. And this will probably happen around three times in total during the journey. Congratulations, you've made it to Mars. But radiation doesn't just go away. Because the problem is, Mars's atmosphere is a lot thinner than our own atmosphere, and it doesn't have a global magnetic field to offer protection. So what that means is that at the altitude that the Mars One settlement is going to be built at, there'll be an initial exposure of 240 millisieverts per year, which is much too high. So one of the first tasks of the settlers will be to scoop up as much Martian soil as possible and place it on top of the settlement. In total, you would need around five meters or so to get the same level of protection that we receive from the Earth's atmosphere. Another step you could take is limit the amount of time that you're on the surface to an average of around one hour per day or so, or you could just go out every few days and go out for a couple hours. And combining those together, we estimate that the exposure to the Mars One astronauts on the surface will be 11 millisieverts per year. And that's actually tiny. To put that into perspective, the astronauts on the International Space Station are exposed to over 10 times that amount, 150 millisieverts per year. So to wrap this all up, let's work out how long we can operate on the surface of Mars 4 before exceeding the astronaut career allowance. Have to put a little bit of mass in here somewhere. So, quick and painless calculation. We start off with our budget of 1,000 millisieverts. We subtract how much we absorb on the way to Mars. We then divide by 11 millisieverts per year. the units of millisievert on the top. And working this out, we come to the conclusion that our operational lifetime on the surface of Mars is 55.8 years. And when you reduce your exposure that low, 55.8 years, that's absolutely fine. And hopefully that should convince you that this mission really can be a reality and that it is feasible with regards to radiation exposure, and that's not a limiting factor. So I hope you liked this video. Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I've got a number of great videos coming up. Feel free to subscribe. Next time I'm going to be talking about astronaut training. See you then.